In this Fusion tutorial, you'll model a honeycomb lampshade prototype, plus a simple light bulb and cord for stunning lighting renderings to showcase your design. Watch the keyboard shortcuts in the bottom left corner of the Fusion canvas. They'll guide you throughout the tutorial. We'll start by creating the first of three components used in this project. Start by creating your first sketch on the vertical construction plane facing you. Choose the inscribed polygon tool and place it at the center of the origin. We'll use that point as a reference throughout the tutorial to keep things aligned. You can use my 5mm dimension if you'd like to follow along exactly, but the focus here is on the workflow. There's no specific manufacturing method or product requirement behind this design. Next, create two guidelines to help with the honeycomb pattern. Be sure to turn them into construction lines, since they're only for reference and not part of the final geometry. While it's not strictly necessary for this project, fully constraining your sketches is a good habit. It helps keep your sketch relationship stable and predictable. Fusion makes this easier with auto-constraints, which suggest constraints you can choose from as you sketch. While you're still inside the active sketch, start a rectangular pattern. Select the polygon as your object and the two construction lines as your directions. There are pros and cons to this approach, which I'll cover at the end when we summarize the project. Set the distribution type to spacing so you can control the design by adjusting the distance between objects and switch the direction to symmetric. You'll create more polygons than you actually need. This is intentional. It gives us flexibility later in the workflow and saves time up front by skipping the guesswork of finding the perfect quantity. Set the distance to 10 mm for both direction settings. This is the distance between each polygon center and since the help lines go from the center of the polygon to the center of one side, the spacing ends up slightly shorter than the 5 mm distance between the center and the top of your polygon. A quantity of 8 for both directions gives you plenty to work with. And you can zoom out to approach the next step from an angle that gives you a better overview. Your next task is to define the part of your sketch area that will become a 3D solid body. Use a two-point rectangle, starting at the center of one polygon and ending at the center of another. The reason is simple. As you'll see later in this tutorial, we'll use a circular pattern. And starting and ending your rectangle in the center of polygons ensures it aligns correctly when the pattern is applied. If you try to apply dimensions now, you'll notice they become driven dimensions. That's because your sketch is already fully constrained after snapping to the polygon centers. These dimensions reflect design choices you've already made, so editing them won't affect the geometry. Go ahead and finish the sketch, then switch to the front view. You'll be using elements from within the two-point rectangle, but first you need a rough draft of the lampshade. Start your lampshade sketch on the flat horizontal construction plane and place a center diameter circle directly above the origin. Set the diameter to 100 mm and extrude it 35 mm as a new body. Then, switch to a bottom view and use the shell command with a 3mm inside thickness to hollow out the lampshade. Applying the shell from this angle lets you keep working from a natural viewpoint, and later you can simply flip it upside down in your slicer software if you plan to 3D print a project. Activate the extrude tool and press and hold the left mouse button to select the sketch profile located behind the solid body, from the pop-up menu that appears.
over extrude the sketch to give yourself some margin in case you make future changes to the diameter of the lampshade. Set the operation type to intersect. This leaves you with only the geometry where the sketch and solid body overlap. Next, you'll refine this part with a few important adjustments. It's strategic to make these changes now, before multiplying the part, because it saves time and reduces the risk of missing details later. Add a full round fillet to the top edge. This fillet is parametric, so it will automatically adjust if you update the part's dimensions. Fillets are added for several reasons. They improve the user experience when handling the product, enhance the appearance and can also increase strength. Don't worry if you accidentally miss applying fillets before multiplying the part. You can always go back through Fusion's parametric timeline and insert a fillet feature before the pattern step. One area where a fillet can help improve strength is along the inside and back edges. As for the full round fillets on the bottom, they're not just for aesthetics, they also make the lamp more forgiving if you ever bump your head against it. All your fillet actions appear in the timeline. Just right click any of them to go back and edit individual fillet settings. Apply a glossy yellow appearance to this part of your lampshade now if you want all the bodies you create to share the same look. If you'd rather have different parts in different colors, skip this step for now and apply appearances to each body individually later. Fusion gives you a smorgasbord of options when it comes to customizing appearance. When creating your circular pattern, select the blue set axis centered above the origin. You might not know exactly how much of the circumference you removed during the extrude intersect operation, but that's not a problem. You can simply increase the quantity until the pattern fills the lampshade all the way around. Use the front view to inspect the circular pattern and make sure the bodies are aligned properly before you press OK. Switch to the top level component before creating your light bulb component. This ensures the light bulb is placed at the same hierarchical level as the lampshade component in your project browser. You'll now have a fresh component with a clean timeline that captures all the work specific to this part. You're using a top-down design methodology in this project. And to build the next part in place, you'll need a new sketch plane. Sketching directly on top of the solid lampshade body is difficult because of the full round fillets. A tangent plane is perfect for this situation. It's easy to apply and gives you a clean flat surface that's tangent to the rounded body. Create your new sketch plane and place a center diameter circle with an 8mm diameter at the center of your design. While this workflow makes it quick and easy to place the circle, keep in mind that it's not linked to the lampshade geometry. That means it won't update automatically if you make changes to the lampshade later. Set the extrude direction to two sides. Push the circle 20 mm down and 15 mm up. Confirm the operation as new body. Use the view cube to reorient the model and continue working on your light bulb. Use a simple sphere to illustrate the light bulb. You'll place this sphere on the bottom face of the solid body you just created. First, select the sketch plane, the flat surface of your solid, and then click the center point of that face as the sphere's starting point. Fusion may suggest a cut operation by default, which can spark some creative uses, but for this tutorial, change it to new body. Confirm the operation, then use the view cube to reorient your model. Create a new component for the electrical cable. Make sure it's placed at the same hierarchical level as your honeycomb lampshade and light bulb components in the browser. Verify that the new component is active 
so you can start working on it immediately. Start a new sketch on the vertical construction plane facing you. If you're having trouble finding the right starting point, don't worry. That's because no geometry has been projected from the light bulb component. Just orbit your view and start the sketch from a different angle. You might notice that 3D sketch is turned on in my sketch palette. That's just the default setting, it's not required here since we're working in 2D. Set the height of the electrical cable to 70 mm and make sure everything looks right before moving on. Start a new sketch on top of the light bulb component. Draw a center diameter circle and set the diameter to 3 mm. Next, switch to the sweep command. Select the circle as your profile and then use the 70 mm sketch line from the electrical cable component as your path. Make sure to set the operation to new body and confirm the sweep. Apply the black glossy plastic appearance to the electrical cable. Then switch to the light bulb component before adding any appearances to its bodies. This ensures that all actions are recorded correctly in each component's timeline keeping your design organized and easy to edit later. This light bulb component is made up of two bodies. To match what you see on the screen, apply the metal black oxide appearance to the first part. Then add a 1500 lumen frosted bulb appearance to the light bulb body inside the component. It's hard to know every appearance in Fusion's massive library, but a good tip is to just use the search bar and explore. I didn't even know there was a light bulb appearance until I stumbled on it. So the takeaway is, stay curious when you're building your models. If everything looks good, go ahead and save a new version of your project before jumping into the rendering workspace. Then follow along as we set up a photo booth environment, adjust the lighting and choose a resolution of 1920 by 1080 for the final image. Perfect for showcasing your model. Let's wrap things up with a quick look at the workflow we used. And if you've got any thoughts or questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. Personally, I find the sketch with the rectangular pattern to be a fast and intuitive approach, but there is a trade-off. Patterns created directly in a sketch don't appear as separate features in the timeline, which makes editing a bit more tedious. In general, it's a good habit to keep sketches simple and create patterns in the solid or surface modeling environments instead. That way, your design stays more flexible and easier to tweak. I've linked two popular honeycomb tutorials at the end of this video, both with hundreds of likes. So check them out if you want to explore more projects like this one. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, let me know by leaving a comment, giving it a like, sending a super thanks or subscribing to the channel. Your feedback helps me know what to create more of. Thanks for watching.